Hello everyone. I am Priyanshi. I am a core member here at DSE Kit, and today we are going to be looking at different ways to deploy your ML model. And before we get into that, why is this important? Well, because it's 2021. You are going to have either ML as a feature in your application, or it's going to be your entire platform. I mean, most of the project ideas and. Um, and in hackathon it's all about user accessibility right it's about making a solution end to end and if you're actually deploying your ml model it would make it would give you an edge because if you can you have this revolutionary idea of classifying between cats and dogs but if a user actually asks you okay cool uh, how do i test it out you won't actually give them the jupyter notebook and be like there you go no you would actually provide them an interface where they could just upload an image and get a prediction okay so it will really give you an edge and it, it will be made really easy if you just stay tuned and uh, these slides are available at the link uh, mentioned down there and it has all the code and all the steps um, if you need to refer back later so uh, what is the tech stack that we're going to be choosing well we can do a um, mix and match first uh, first up on our left side we have fast api and streamlet uh, one of the fastest and easiest ways uh, to get your web app up and running and uh, next you have where you're going to be deploying aws or heroku and uh, we're going to go through all of these look through the code look through the steps and basically do a mix and match as you like now, we need to get two definitions out of the way, which is platform as a service and infrastructure as a service, because it will help you make right decisions on where exactly do you want to deploy your platform. Now, uh, in platform as a service, when I talk about that, it's that you're going to be providing the code for the application and you're going to be providing uh, all the model weights for it, the data for it, basically, and everything else that platform will take care and heroku is most commonly used and there's also aws SageMaker, and ml studio but uh, if you have infrastructure as a service then you are given a little bit more freedom you can decide uh, what operating system do you want to deploy this in like what do you want to use and um, what will be the runtime of that and all of the other things uh, you have the freedom of take, uh, taking care of but still the server side of things and the services uh, aws is your or gcp will provide you okay so once we have these definitions out of the way uh, let's see now is your application uh, like you're using ml as the entire application or it's just a feature now how would you decide between them well Take for example, you are uh, you have to deploy uh, if a mask, uh, if a person is wearing a mask or not, okay? And you have to do it for a company. Now, just identifying if a person is wearing a mask is just a part of the problem. You have to also provide uh, auth page for that company itself, a database with all the other company people names and everything else. So here is exactly where ML will be used as a feature because and it won't be just one person doing all the code or uh, writing all the code. It would be one person handling out the front end, one person handling out the back end, one person writing the code for this prediction itself. And if you like write all the ML code in just one um, entire repo itself, it will get pretty clumsy, right? Because uh, you need, so if you are just working on parts differently, uh, different parts of the problem differently, you need a way for the, uh, the front end people to actually use this predicted value and display it so uh, you won't want to uh, include all the code that you wrote in the entire in the main part in the main repo itself rather you would make uh, a separate application and you would deploy it and then you would use um, an api to extract uh, whatever the prediction was Okay, so once we have that, that's ML as a feature, and then you can have ML as the entire application, which will be, for example, you have an image colorization project. Okay, now you don't really need a database, nor do you do need any auth login. It's just a fun app that you can make, and uh, users can just uh, upload an image and uh, see it get colorized. So that will be ML as an entire application. Okay, 
So first, we're going to be look, uh, looking at the most common way, uh, which is going to be ML as a feature. And for that, uh, my recommendation is FastAPI plus Heroku. Now, this is the combination I use. You can use it with AWS or you can use Flask or anything else. But let me convince you why you should use FastAPI. Well, first of all, it is one of the fastest frameworks available. It has speeds comparison with Golang. Okay. And uh, it's like, it provides you automated docs and you will know uh, when we actually write code for it and deploy it, you will know what I'm talking about. And it's production ready and it's really scalable and it's really intuitive and easy to write. So uh, the, if you need to install it, it's just uh, two steps. Okay, I bet it's just two steps. Just go to the docs right here and you will be good to go. Uh, just two lines of code. So once we have that, let's see what exactly will we be predicting. And uh, these cute little cats and dogs are, are a revolutionary idea for our hackathon. And this is exactly what we'll be predicting. And I uh, took the liberty of writing the code for it and just having the model's weights, uh, which would be either a PTH or a pickle file. Uh, it's nothing but uh, what uh, uh, if you actually like take all the weights, take all the parameters that are in your model and you represent it as some form of file. So every time you can load that file itself and your model would just predict whatever uh, according to the parameters that were in that file. It, that's all it is. Okay. So I took the liberty of extracting that and we're just going to be looking at our fast API code and the steps to actually uh, deploy it on Heroku. Okay, so once we have that, let's look at the timeline. So first we're going to write our fast API um, app. Uh, There's a small mistake there. Okay, just fast API app. Okay, so I have provided uh, the code for it down there. You can just go and refer back to it later. So this is our, just a sec, yes. Take a look at the model at sorry, take a look at the file itself. Okay, so first of all, it is an image classification task. So we need to understand something. Uh, if in a web app, if you you need this as an API, right? So you need have to have some way to send this image in form of some like uh, in form of some string that you can just dump uh, at, at the end of uh, in your uh, API itself, and that will give you uh, a give back you a prediction in form of some JSON or JSON format. Okay, so how would you actually do that with us? How would you convert a image to a string? Well, uh, you should know that all data is binary data, and it's pretty easy to do that. So first uh, here, first up here, we are doing exactly that. We're going to assume that our data is in a base 64 format okay i will tell you exactly how to convert it to so you can use it in um, your application itself but assuming okay assuming we have our um, uh, we have our app up and running and as soon this predict method we have to dump here some string which will actually contain the data for our image and that image has to be fed into our model to get back a prediction so uh, just a few basic inputs uh, as we go through it you will know uh, what we're going to do we're just going to initialize our app and uh, then take a look at this part over here okay so when we have a predict method we will usually dump our string data here and get back a prediction so what exactly is this function doing is it's taking an input object of type input so what is this type input well it's inheriting for something called base model but what do you need to understand about base model is just that it specifies what uh, format uh, your uh, API is going to take in request for if you're going to put something there in what format it's going to take your request. So all it's specifying this base model class is that it is 
the name is uh, base 64 str and it is of a string format that's all it's specifying okay so this input object will be of type input and first we have to convert this to actually a pil image now why a pil image because your model is going to uh, most uh, all of the models take a pil image as an input okay so that is why you need to convert this to your PIL image. And uh, once you have that, uh, you can just feed this image to a get prediction function, which we will talk about. It is in magic. It is a very small code for that. And uh, we will get back a prediction and we will just print it out. Now, let's take a closer look at this base64 to PIL image. How would we actually convert it? So right now we have an image, right? Uh, so we have to encode it to UTF-8. What exactly it will be doing? It will just add a B in front of a text because to make it make it in bytes, uh, byte accessible, right? And uh, once it has that, uh, it will decode uh, using the B64 decode uh, method. It will decode that into actual bytes. And when we have that, we will use bytes IO to well read into those bytes and return back an object and this object can be like represented as anything but since we need an e a pil image we're going to open this byte object in as a pil image so we can actually get back our pil image and feed into our model so if it's a little overwhelming uh, don't be confused it's just it's boilerplate code you can just uh, pick it out from here and use it whenever you like uh, in image classification tasks okay so don't worry it's all about uh, we have a string uh, we have to convert that into byte format uh, then we have to decode that byte format and then we have to convert it into a pil image that's it that's all that's happening yeah okay so once we have that clear let's see at this magic get prediction function and uh, where is it coming from this is coming from utils so utils is uh, i like to divide my code into two parts it's the main uh, the app code and the other would be whatever i wrote in the model so when you get a prediction your uh, uh, your app won't actually know like what kind of model would you use it would be the same model that was there in um, it would be the same model that you used while uh, making the prediction itself in your Jupyter notebook. So what I'm doing here is I'm copy pasting the model code, whatever. I'm using a ResNet here, a ResNet 34 pre-trained. That's it. And I'm just copy pasting that here. And uh, a few imports. I've actually written this in PyTorch, but you can do this with Keras, TensorFlow, whatever you want. And uh, then you are loading the checkpoint now what does it mean it's because we have this model.pth file right this has all our um, all the code uh, sorry all the parameters right so we need some way for our model to revert back to the state where it was using those parameters so we have to feed these parameters into our model okay so you have to be in this state where we are feeding you these parameters and this is exactly what your state should be right now so we can get an appropriate prediction that is what exactly we are doing here we are loading a model and then we are loading the states into that model and this model uh, we will be loading it on G uh, cpu because we don't uh, really have gpu available so uh, this is exactly what we will be load we will be loading this uh, model weights into our model okay that's what we're doing and then uh, our get prediction function is uh, we just apply a simple uh, resize transform to it and then we convert it to a tensor uh, then we have our uh, we uh, apply these transforms to it uh, unsqueeze is doing nothing but uh, if uh, you actually know about the, uh, writing ML models, you know this is going to make your batch size equal to one. Now, uh, why is this important? I won't go into the detail of it, but if you are writing ML models, you would know about this. And uh, then you're just loading your model here, and then you are uh, feeding this image tensor into your model, getting an output. And then what 
this line over here is getting is that we are going to receive an array okay and since uh, our two classes are cats and dogs we are going to receive an array of size 2 and it will have the probabilities of what class like what class is most likely to be predicted so if our image is of a cat the probab the number returned in uh, arr of 0 sorry uh, in predicted of 0 would actually be higher than predicted of dog which is predicted of 1 okay so it is just going to return a probab uh, a probability vector uh, probability array and we just have to here i'm just extracting uh, whatever has the highest one so if uh, the uh, cat has the highest probability we would return cat or else talk so we went through this uh, and uh, this is also pretty boilerplate and now let's try to get a prediction okay uh, on a local machine because that was our step two so i took the liberty of also writing another uh, small code to actually test this out so what are we going to doing is here uh okay before we do that we have to uh, keep running uh this app here and how do we run this app is i'll show this one start. so the command here would be uicon which is um, okay so fast api uses something called uicon which implements asynchronous python and why is this important i won't go into details on it but this is how fast api does things and it gets real results so just go with fast api's ways okay so we're going to be writing uicon and then we're going to be writing the name of our application which is right now main.py and uh, then we are going to have app this is our application and then we're going to have a hot reload just click and this is where exactly our server is running so if you go and visit this yes detail not found but oh and remember one thing i was talking about uh fast api giving you automatic docs i'll just click on docs and see you get swag swagger docs as they like to call it swagger docs and uh, it has everything that you need to know like what exactly will you be feeding to it in the put method and what exactly you will be returning and everything else okay so now that our application is up and running let me just open another actually i can just do it from command line itself um, okay so now we have this test api so we need to test if we are actually getting a right prediction so for that and this is going to be part of your application in which you are opening uh, which you are reading uh, an, an image a test image file or whatever it is right now we have just one test image and this is of a cat let me just change the name quickly here yes we have a test image of a cat we're going to be reading this in binary format again encoding this entire image in form of um uh, in form of a byte string and uh, then we are going to be decoding it with utf format which is like removing that b remember the b the extra b we added in to make it by string we're going to be removing that and just going to have a simple string and uh, then we have and this is exactly what we're going to be dumping we're going to be dumping a base 64 uh key this is our key value and this so it's key value pair and uh, remember this matches with our input which we provided right there okay so we have that and we're just going to dump it here and um so what exactly is this is exactly where our server is running and then we have a predict method here and uh, once we dump this uh, we are going to get back a data dictionary and we're going to print out both the data dictionary and what exactly did it predicted okay so we can just go ahead and actually we have a test file here yes so just test fast api up wait a second and there we go it gave us back category which is cat and then it predicted cat which is correct so we know we are getting a prediction on our local system right so step one done now we're going to talk about uh, requirements.txt okay 
so what exactly is requirements for txt well it's everything that is required to get your application running okay so uh, uh how can you exactly uh, extract this is let me just close this over quickly uh, right pip freeze and then you give a greater than arrow and then requirements.txt and everything that you will require for this application itself will come into that and um, once you have that we are going to look into the profile now profile is really important for heroku because right now here we specified right uh, by writing uh, ubicon main app reload but how would heroku know what is the command like we know what is the command but how would heroku know so this is exactly the command we are telling heroku okay this is what we are going to be running which is our main app here and uh, uh, what is the port for it and what's the host for it okay also boilerplate code that you can just copy paste okay so once we are done with it what is our next step is deploy it so we're going to be using command line for deploying it go get in it get at seems to be taking a bit of time that's done get commit minus m and we have deploying and once we have that do create sorry heroku create my bad heroku create and the name of uh, our app which can be whatever you like i'm going to keep it test cat or dog app And once you have that, check with uh, git remote minus v if your Heroku has been added or not. And yes, you can both fetch and pull. And if you go and look at your personal apps again, test catalog is added. Now, all you have to do is git push Heroku master. and the deployment process begin we'll revisit it and uh, check it in the last we'll check uh, both our apps uh, but it's going to take some time so we should just move on and go to our next part uh, we will get back to it and we can actually uh, you can call uh, you can visit this code right there the the code for fast api is test code right this you can use and get your own production uh, the link is right there okay now ml is the entire application and for that i usually like to use streamlet and uh, you can either use aws or heroku it depends on your model size okay so because uh, when i say model size because uh, heroku has a soft limit of uh, I think 400 or 500 but it's pretty small and if a model gets large enough uh, do it with aws that's all i'm saying and streamlet why because you don't need the holy trinity of html css javascript and if you're doing ml as an entire application probably your team just consists of all um, ml people okay no fronted people know that knowledge so you don't need that you've been writing python your whole life let's write python to make some front end cool ui ux like a cool uh, interface just by using python and you will see what i'm talking about in a minute and all of the details that i've gave are there in the docs and um, when i say streamlet makes uh, your platform uh, like uh, it makes it very interactive while also keeping the source code in the form of Pythonic scripts. Let me show you the code and then we can actually believe me. So first step is obviously writing the code and here I like to divide it like this. So I have another folder for app and just keep the folder structure in mind whenever you're making these. And here in app.py I have all the streamlit code. And this is the code okay so it's not doesn't seem like a lot of like what exactly would it do let me run it and show you 
so we will go to our streamlet app and uh, how do you run streamlet uh, well installation is just pip to install streamlet it's just one line how do you run streamlet is streamlet run now we are in streamlet app so we have to go app and then app dot be there take a few minutes to start up so a few seconds to start up okay there we go and you see this we are at port 4501 just copy this and bye bye fast api hello streamlet and this is it this all of that just like a few lines of code which is so small it leads to like what this is so neat so precise so cool okay and let me just show you what i mean by that um let's go to our um, ml deployment my bad ml deploy okay ml deployment snippets and here we have our test image just upload that and click on docker cat and we should get a prediction yes we did get a prediction it's a cat and we were right so now that we know that this is what we're going to be building with such a few lines of code let's see how now uh just a few imports uh, again i'm uh, the get prediction function is the same the utils.py is exactly the same okay and uh, again we need an image in pil format because it's different like whatever in whatever format streamlit takes an image that is different and we need it in pil format so that is why we need to convert it like this and uh, this is just to ignore warnings like you'll see a huge list of warnings if i don't put this so it's don't pay much attention to that and uh, then we have uh, we'll get back to this function uh, look at this image data so this is how streamlet uh, uploads data and this is through a file uploader and you can uh, specify which type of uh, extensions are all allowed and then uh, when i say widgets this is what i mean by it it uh, it's file upload sorry a file uploader widget we have a button widget uh, which says dog or cat and that's it it will give you such a clean precise ui and uh, it's just after that it's just portal pro if we have some image data and if we have some dog or cat something we have pressed the button or not then we get a prediction and how do we get a prediction passing it to the predict function our image data we received our image data we open it in pil format get our prediction uh, get back our prediction and we just write our prediction onto the app and that's it as simple as that as intuitive as that okay so now that we have it up and running on our local machine so first step is complete now we'll set up an ec2 instance now first of all you need to sign up for aws and it gives you 750 hours of ec2 magic for a year and it won't uh, charge you anything so if you need it quickly for a hackathon it sets up pretty quick i think i got it set up like in uh, 10 minutes or so sorry uh, i got the permissions in 10 minutes or so pretty easy to set up uh, pretty easy to sign up and everything and then you will be greeted by this dashboard now we need to create an ec2 instance in which uh, go to the instances over here launch a new instance and i've written the, all the steps in case you uh, you need to refer back later on the slides search for ubuntu and there this is the operating system that i was talking about this is the freedom that you will be getting with aws and and you have that this is the fiat tier that i'm eligible uh, away uh, that i'm eligible for and then we will quickly configure some details 
uh, we don't need adding tax we do need to add a security group which is i'll tell you why because uh, streamlet uh, runs on port 8501 so we need to tell aws like okay we need to tell our instance so this is the port that will be running on uh, we mention our port 8501 and we set the course to anywhere and uh, that is it uh, now if we do a review and launch uh, yes uh, the security issues are there uh, there's a few security issues but uh, get it up and running quickly it's it is major just warnings okay and uh, next you need to create a new uh, key pair okay uh, let's name it streamlet aws okay. once you have that uh, just download the key pair and this is exactly how we'll be logging into our vm so what we have done right now is we have created an instance uh, which runs uh, an ubuntu server which is a vm and we need to log in into our vm from our terminal itself how will we do that how will we do that by it being still being safe is through streamlet this dot pem file okay and uh, now you need to okay now you need to uh, first of all, um, if you're going to be doing this, you need a terminal. And if you're on Windows, uh, you can go with Putty, of course, uh, for your terminal needs. But I highly, highly recommend WSL. It's so easy to set up. And uh, you can literally work on both your Windows system and uh, your Linux system side by side. Okay. And if you're Linux itself, you have no worries, of course. Um, so we need to uh, the pem file that we downloaded is right now on our windows system and we need to bring it to our linux system so what we'll be doing for that is first of all i'll just quickly go to my downloads and i'll go to our ml deployment and uh, let's put it there so our pem file is there and uh, let me just quickly do a quick ls so this is our pem file okay and uh, look at the permissions right now so from that we just need to provide the owner of it read permissions and everyone else gets no permissions for it and this is pretty important if we need to like log in into it securely so what we'll be doing first of all we need to uh, uh, transport it to our Linux system. Okay, so how will we do that? Is we write mv move streamlet aws pem file to tilde, and this is where our dot ssh file will be located, and there it is our dot ssh file. And we're done with it. So we're copying this uh, streamlit file to our dot ssh folder, which uh, will contain all our ssh keys. And uh, once we're done with that, let's go visit it. And now we are in our dot ssh folder. Let's look at the file permissions again. So streamlit.aws still has uh, all the file permissions change that to just read right sorry just read for the owner itself so how will we do that chmod streamlet AWS pen. Uh, let's look at the permissions again and there we go read for the for the owner itself so uh, once we have done that let's see what our next step is Oh, we did download the key pair. We didn't launch the instance. Just a second. We have to launch the instance too. And instance is now launching. Let's view instances. And uh, there it is. Still pending. Uh, it will turn up. Uh, the instance state will go to running. Just a few seconds. So now that we have also like set up our EC2 instant, we have created the key pair and downloaded it. And uh, we have to change the file permissions, which we did. Now our next step is to log in into our VM. So just wait a second. Yes, it has changed to running. Copy your IP address over here and then write this line sudo 
I'll write this. Let me just clear my screen and just show you exactly. Okay. Right here. Okay. Okay. So we write sudo. Uh, it will look better if I just place it here. Don't think that exists. Okay. My bad. Uh, sudo ssh minus i and then within quotation are uh, pem file names and then we write ubuntu which is the os we used and then the public ip address that we just copied and that's it try doing that uh, right yes it will add it to the list of known hosts and there we go we are officially in our um, vm and if you look at it it uh, recently like contains nothing in it okay so first of all let's just copy our files here so we can just work with this vm as for now um let's do uh, control d to get out of it and uh, then again write this path sudo minus i again our pem files name uh, in right. our pem files name in sudo min or oh, sudo my bad sudo scp minus i streamlet aws dot pem and then we have to write the path to that so if you are on uh windows terminal or wsl uh this path can change for me that part is uh just keep pressing tab and you will come to know so i have to go to mnt i have to c and then users and then my file and then ml deployment snippets and then we have our streamlet app so we need to copy this and then we need to write ubuntu now pay attention in this part ubuntu and then again the public ip address uh, name that we copied and then a colon and a tilde now once you have the colon and a tilde just play enter and once you're done with that it will start to copy and it will take a uh, few moments uh, the model pgh uh, meanwhile let's go and check if our model uh, the heroku app that we deployed is done yet and yes see uh, the deploy is done uh, yeah the soft limit is 300 for heroku but it's okay uh, it doesn't exceed that much and this is the url in which our app is deployed so yeah, API is deployed. So if we go again to here, I don't know. Yeah, detail not found, but I go to docs and we sure should be able to find something. Yes, we do. Now, since this is working, we should just replace our uh, local host URL in uh, fast API test with this our test on dog cat and it will still be able to predict when we uh, dump data in this endpoint and uh, let's try that okay this is running let's try the same thing here uh, fast api app and then cd and try to run this python test fast api app hopefully we should get a prediction right now if everything went right fingers crossed and taking a little bit of time and yes we did get the prediction right uh it did print out a category and it did return us uh predicted uh so one so we have officially learned how to deploy an app uh, an api uh, using fast api and uh, heroku 
and once this model weights are being done uh, it's almost done we will now learn how to do this with streamlet and aws2 uh, let me just close this real quick and uh, get back to our instance okay yeah right here and yes it has copied now what we need to is we need to log in back into our vm again now everything we will do will be within this so first uh, because it's a brand new system just do a get uh just do an update on this again it will be fast enough and then you need to like install everything from scratch so we'll also install python so sudo apt install python 3 pip and yes once we are done with that we uh okay so for um we made a requirements.txt for our fast api app right so we can do the same with streamlit app so we don't really have to mention everything uh again and again so if you see the requirements.txt right here it just has streamlit and a few pytorch um dependencies and that's it uh so again same thing pip freeze and then requirements.txt so uh python is always downloaded our system and then we can just sorry we can just cd into our streamlet app and we can install pip3 install minus r for recursively and our requirements.txt now it will uh, download everything it needs to and if you ever uh, are doing this on your own and you need to refer back to this the slides are always going to be there along with this video and it should take a bit of time uh, to torch to no downloading torch but apart from that we are like 90 nine percent done all we'd have to do right now is check and i think we are done just a couple warnings Not a couple a lot of portings in fact yeah you don't need to worry about it yes now we're done so uh just a few minutes it took and now just do the exact same thing that we did in our terminal just run app.py and it will start okay sorry streamlet command not found actually you need to restart the vm control d log out log in again it happens sometimes just log in again cd into our streamlet app and then run streamlet run app app.py and it should give us yes this is uh that it's running on so just copy this and uh sorry uh we don't need to copy uh the network url rather the external url my bad and there we go we are officially running and uh, let's actually go ahead and check if this works or not cat yes there we go so now there's only a teeny tiny bit problem with that if we stop 
doing this if we actually log out of our terminal and even if we stop the process like this it will just shut down automatically it just shows connecting it cannot connect to it so how do we help with that there's something called tmux which you can use and how do we get it well um get sudo apt-get install tmux and once it's it's already installed here and once it's done start we have to start a new session and this session will be the one that will run forever so i will name this as streamlit session and uh, once we're inside this uh just write the command that we want to give immortality to and this is the command press enter and see the server started and now we want this to keep running forever okay so bear with me this is the crucial part uh write control b and then d as soon as you get this detached everything is good to go now you can just safely turn off your uh, terminal sorry and we can go back to the same link which wasn't working and there we go it's still running and now uh with that we've reached the end uh we saw today two ways to deploy our ml models and i hope that will be useful uh in your solution challenges if you decide to use ml in it and uh, are there any questions